So your case is that Android copied iPhone. Yes. And then it's failing. Yes. You've got an iPhone there. In that, like, what's the um, conflict of interest or whatever? You have an iPhone there. Isn't that a conflict of interest? I, I, I. Okay, okay, I know, I know. Look here, you're an Apple show. Of course you think Android copied off and you cocks like a fucking I want you to think about this rationally. A, all my videos are Windows, so clearly, like... Secondly, I'm not gonna sit here and say Apple hasn't copied a bunch of shit from other people. They 100% have. But I think this is an interesting story. So let me rewind the clock back to 2003. Andy Rubin and five other guys come together to form Android, a software company for digital cameras, which pretty soon they realize there's a market of like five people, so they pivot to the much more lucrative smartphone market. And when I say smartphones, I mean this. Meanwhile, back at Apple, Jobs is pretty concerned that smartphones would take over the iPod market. So they decide to make a phone, the Motorola Rocker. Android is struggling badly. And the Motorola Rocker is shit. Well, I was supposed to resume my music right back to where it was. This is when Google comes in, buys Android for $50 million, and Apple decides to make their own phone. Now, why would Google buy Android? Well, Google is fairly concerned that the smartphone market will be dominated by their arch rival, Microsoft. See, if Windows CE took over the market, they could be like, bun you Google, use Bing. Thank you for making Windows fail and not making us use Bing. So they start on the Google Sooner. What? That's what the phone is called. Meanwhile, Apple is moving heaven and earth. Steve Jobs is throwing tantrums. People are crying and divorcing and whatnot just to get this. Imagine people got divorced for this just for you to cry to Taylor Swift videos on it. Now Android is like, wow, you have done such a great job. It's got a keyboard, it's got great software, it's competitive, while the iPhone is a buggy mess. Everything's crashing, there's no 3G, people are skeptical of the no keyboard, and the project is almost entirely dropped. And then January 9, 2007. This is a day I've been looking forward to for two and a half years. Let me set the scene. Andy Rubin is driving on his way to Las Vegas. Steve Jobs is unveiling the iPhone. And Andy is so shocked that he pulls over to watch the rest of the event. And when it's done, he goes, I guess we're not gonna ship that phone. Perhaps this is an obvious genre, but let's go back to 2005. There's our Android or iPhone, but just a bajillion different phones with different softwares, and all of them have this. This, by the way, is the first ever Android phone. Objection, you're waffling. Sorry. Exhibit A, Steve Ballmer. $500 fully subsidized with a plan? I said, that is the most expensive phone in the world, and it doesn't appeal to business customers because it doesn't have a keyboard. What's your point? My point is that everyone had keyboards, including Android. But here's what Android looked like before the iPhone launch, and here's what it looked like after the iPhone launch. Not only that, the display feels a lot like the iPhone as well, and it looks a lot like the iPhone. This is whatever, I'm bored. Tell me something else. Oh. Okay. Here's what a Google engineer said about the first iPhone. As a consumer, I was blown away. I wanted one immediately. But as a Google engineer, I thought we're gonna have to start over. Huh? Huh? Mm, I don't know. I'm just not feeling it, you know. The vibes are off. Case dismissed. All right, so I did buy the first of our Android phone, which released about a year after the first iPhone. And usability-wise, there's not much you can do with it. Unlike iPhones, the community for this phone is very limited. And also unlike iPhones, this phone is completely handicapped unless you put a SIM in it and log into your Google account, which Google has shut down the servers, essentially bricking this phone. So I tried flashing it, following tutorials and whatnot, to get it working to no avail. So comment if you can help. Now on to the iPhone. We're looking at the iPhone 3G from 2008, and the support for this is slightly better. For one, the community for this phone is much bigger, which keeps it usable in 2024. Kinda. You do have to bypass the activation, which you can jailbreak it, but the app store is completely shut down, and so are the 3G networks in America. But unlike Android versus iPhone today, which I will admit there isn't a huge difference, back in 2008, it's pretty clear that the iPhone is leagues ahead of Android. The iPhone feels better built, which partially because it took the risk of removing the physical keyboard, which people were outraged about in 2008, but in 2024, as big as our phones have gotten, it's really not an issue. And typing on this keyboard is not as nice. It's almost like you have to use your nails to type. Secondly, the touchscreen is a good imitation of the iPhone. An imitation. See, it's not multi-touch. You can't do this. The Dream is lacking in a plethora of areas, which makes sense, as the iPhone was in secret development since 2005, and the Dream only had about a year after the restart. The only boon is that the Dream released for $179, which sounds like a steal, until he realized that the iPhone 3G released the same year for $199. Truth be told, iPhones were just a better deal back in the late 2000s, but that didn't last, as competition caught up very quickly, and by 2014 to 15, Android's offerings were just as good, if not better than iPhone, at lower prices, and that reflected in the market share. Until 
Okay, so recently news broke that Android's market share is shrinking. In 2023, out of the top 10 best-selling phones, seven were iPhones. And globally, Android's market share has fallen from about 87% down to 70%, which is alarming. I in no way am happy about this, by the way. I don't want one company against all of Android. That sounds like a monopoly. But why is this? Firstly, Apple has always been sort of a status symbol. Like here in the United States, if you get a girl's phone number and she gets a green text message, bro, she ain't replying. Like the stigma is that Android is for broke boys, which is not true. And even in India, it's like, oh my God, he has an iPhone, which is partially because of the ridiculous prices, but still. And then there's the ecosystem. Once you're in with your MacBook and your AirPods and your iPad, there is no going out because everything works so seamlessly. And if you switch, you're gonna lose all your passwords, iMessage, FaceTime, like your whole life is gonna explode. If for example, all your friends and family have an iPhone, you can iMessage or FaceTime. But for those who don't, Good luck. So it's pretty obvious when there's this shame factor pushing people out of Android and the ecosystem locking them into iPhone. And another interesting factor is that there just isn't much of a price difference anymore. We've gotten used to paying a thousand dollars for our phones and because Android is just as good as iPhones, it's no longer cheaper, giving people no incentive to choose Android when it comes to upgrading. 